Yes, okay. And here she is. And Beth is the Resource Conservation, Conservation Division Chief, Department of Planning and Zoning for Howard County Government. She's been in that place for um, six years, uh, working at her role in the county, uh, focused on more than historic preservation, but other sustain sustainable things. And she'll talk about the um, Howard County Cemetery Preservation Advisory Board, which is the point of contact for all cemetery situations and issues in Montgomery County. Howard County. <laughs> Give me a second to get situated. All right, can you hear me okay? And let's just see, okay. Can you even see that little guy? Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for having Howard County here today. I just wanna put forth the, <laughs> the clause that we don't have it all together every day that we're talking about cemeteries in the Department of Planning and Zoning. Uh, it can be a struggle because of um, maybe lack of teeth for some of the laws and just some of the unknowns that we're dealing with. So I just want to put that out there that any information that I'm sharing with you, I, I want to share so that you can take anything that we've done well and run with and anything that we're struggling with, maybe you can come and talk to us and give us some advice as well as we're, as we're dealing with uh, historic preservation and historic cemeteries. Thankfully, uh, I work with an architectural historian who is an amazing researcher. Ken Short uh, is great at looking at wills and deeds and parcels. And he, I call him my Sherlock Holmes because although he deals with other matters with documenting historic homes and the demolition of homes, he spends a lot of time with our cemeteries. And he's been the Sherlock Holmes to really uncover a lot of what has happened in the past couple hundred years in Howard County in uh, lost cemeteries and just finding out more information on cemeteries. So he gave me that little, that little comic strip because I feel like sometimes we don't know what's going on and we don't know who's buried where, but we're determined to figure it out. So today I just want to go over these uh, different topics. Uh, obviously I wanted to touch base on our cemetery preservation codes, our cemetery preservation advisory board, the inventory that the county has, our plan review process, the grants that we've been able to offer the past couple years, which is just amazing in itself that we've been able to move forward with that, and just some of our uh, website, our outreach, and the different things that have to do with our community. So with our, we do have um, some preservation codes in the Department of Planning and Zoning. It's subtitle 13, section 16, and that is public information. If you go on our Muni Code, Howard County site and search, you can read all the information yourself. It is helpful in that it defines cemetery. It has some definitions there. It addresses the, the Cemetery Preservation Advisory Board and what their role is and what's required of them being on the board. And it does talk about the process for our inventory and the fact that it needs to be council approved. And it has uh, addresses the subdivision and development. It talks about setbacks and um, what's required in our review process. It has a section that talks about disinterning. And we've, we actually had that challenge uh, last year, the past couple years. And I'll, I'll give an example of that uh, closer to the end of my presentation. So at least it has a foundation that we were able to go back to and read in how we should proceed in this challenge of disinterning a site. And it talks about the appeal and the enforcement. And as I said, it is, um, it's helpful to have that and to go back to that and we read that and we're really trying to delve in. Um, but I do wish we had a little more teeth, a little more um, black and white clarity in our code. And that's something that we're, we're working on and we bring up. Let me talk about the Cemetery Preservation Advisory Board because this is an amazing group of people that I don't think, well, I know that we wouldn't have made the progress as a county without this board. It existed several years ago, a couple decades ago, actually. And when I came on staff six years ago, I wasn't even aware that that board existed. I was told to handle environmental issues, agri agricultural land preservation issues, and then historic preservation. And it wasn't until I met uh, Mr. Fred Dorsey, and I'm sure some, of, some many of you know him, and uh, unfortunately he's not here today, 
But he sat with me about the first week, six years ago, that I started in my role. And he said, let me, let me tell you about historic preservation. Let me tell you about cemeteries. And so he was the one who kind of clued me in that that should be uh, on my radar in my position as well, working uh, with Department of Planning and Zoning. And we didn't have that board. It had existed, and it just sort of stopped meeting. And that had happened for several years. And so we went to the county executive at the time and got this, this board reinstated, and we got new board members. And now for several years, we've been meeting. We started meeting quarterly to go over cemeteries, uh, the issues that we deal with, outreach, and plan review. And we realized that we had so many projects going on, so much catch up to do, that we we started meeting six times a year. So we meet every other month. Um, we're actually meeting this Tuesday, so I'll be reporting on this wonderful conference uh, as well as the other people that have attended. Uh, David Zinner is not part of our board, but he is often there and is because he lives in Howard County. So it's a public meeting, public citizens can attend, and he, he's wonderful to work with. And um, Liz Larney's here, and she's our chair. And it is through determination that we have just really made some progress in the county. We are allowed to have up to seven members. We only have five, and we're always looking for new, new people to join our team. We do re try to represent all aspects of cemetery with historic prez, archaeology, the religious aspect, the burial aspect, and also the development aspect. And I'll say that at this meeting, we don't always agree. I mean, we're talking about a developer and a preservationist, a religious representative and a developer. <laughs> um, so we, we often have that, uh, that pushback on, well, this is practical, but this is compelling, you know, just as you can imagine, the, the conversations. But I feel like we respect everyone's role and position, and we always allow people to speak. And for the most part, we've moved forward really well in a ha healthy manner with uh, great feedback for plan review. And that's been helpful to me because in my role, um, I have to review anything that comes in that has a cemetery on it. So we get uh, about a few dozen uh, a month pertaining to review, and usually one or two of them have a cemetery. And so I'm able to bring that plan to the board and get their input, pushback, feedback, and I'll move, I'll, I'll share a little bit later with that. Our cemetery inventory. So again, this is a list, and I, I don't expect you to read it. I just want you to see the magnitude of it. The top one is a summary version of just showing the, you know, the, the site name, address, location. And then this is really the original version. And it goes about 40 pages um, because this is just you know, a few of the first couple of sites. But I just wanted to show you that we have like the, the acreage, the parcel, the tax number. So it's really a all-in-one list to try to find the cemetery that we have on record. And so I inherited this list of 204 sites that are approved from our county council. And we have used this to just find out more information. We have a few dozen sites that don't have owners. And it is because, through Ken Short, my architectural historian, that I work with, he determined that a lot of the properties in the 1950s really got subdivided and the cemetery just got lost off of that, that settlement. And since those times, and that's the most of them, since those times we haven't been able to have a, a, an owner. And that's been a challenge when we're trying to move forward with preservation or grants. I mean, if you don't have an owner, who's, who's the recipient of the grant? And so that's that's been hard, uh, but working with this list, we have been able to just get more organized and find out the condition of sites and, and work with the genealogical society to do some site inventories on those small uh, farm or family-owned properties. Uh, we have not really worked with the commercial cemeteries. Obviously, we're aware of them. and. Uh, we'll answer questions when possible, but for the most part, we are focused on the individual or the small organization, the nonprofit that is running historic cemeteries. And we realized starting out uh, six years ago with the preservation, with the Cemetery Preservation Advisory Board, that um, we didn't really know the condition of our sites and how could we implement or move forward or offer grants if we didn't know what was going on. So we worked with Howard County's Genealogical Society. They're a nonprofit group. And just because they care about their ancestry and they're great at researching, they were willing to volunteer and have a team of about 12 people 
go out in teams of two to different locations. We got about 100 of them, well, about 88 of them um, completed out of the 204. Um, but that's, we have to minus the commercial sites out. So we got a good ba a bit of our sites looked at and we used this form. And I have, I brought the form, I brought my grant, I have a little brochure. And so after my talk during the break, I'm gonna find a table or at least have information available. Anything that I have, we, we're happy to share with you to, um, to review or give feedback on too. So it was this quick two pager. We tried to make everything as simple as possible to equip the volunteers to go out on their spare time and on weekends to look at sites, to take photos and complete the box. And a lot of them are like yes or no or check the box. Uh, questions, as you can see, you know, the boundaries, is it a clear boundary, can, is there a known entrance? And we also use some technology with our smartphones, the longitude and lati latitude, we were able to document uh, where this site specifically was. We had a lot of things mapped, but they weren't necessarily accurate. A lot of them were from the formal, former addresses that we had, and as you know, with subdivision and change, we lost some of the exact sites of these. So that was very helpful. And they worked over the past couple years um, in retaining that information for us. And this is just a close up version of just how we filled it out and how we have our inventory number and we created a whole file system, both in our computer and on our, uh, in our file system to just establish folders for these sites. The volunteers looked at the, and also the, the, the board participated in this too. It wasn't just the, um, although they're volunteers too, they're not paid. <laughs> so it was a group effort of volunteers. They obviously looked at the good conditions. We were looking for things that you, if you drive up and you can just note that it's a cemetery, that's a good start because as you can imagine with the bad conditions, you don't, you're just looking around saying, I don't know, where, where are we? And it, are there, is there really a, a cemetery or a, a grave here? Um, so the good conditions was when they were maintained regularly, that there wasn't the vandalism, they had maybe a perimeter or fencing or a sign, so we kind of set that criteria and they took pictures of it. So we had good examples and then as you can imagine and as you've probably dealt with, we've had a lot of poor conditions. We have um, the, the animals taking over <laughs> in the groundhog holes, uh, vandalism, sites that we could not even recognize as a cemetery. Uh, as you know, a lot of the old cemeteries um, were hard to maintain and then the trees grew up through where you couldn't just easily mow or use a tractor. And so we, we looked for the little clump of uh, invasives or trees to, to note some, some of the cemeteries and that's where we did find them. So it's just helpful to give us a baseline. And out of the, let's say, say 90 sites, we did realize that about 30 were in great condition and being well maintained, 30 were in fair condition, you know, really needed a little love, but at least you could recognize it as a cemetery. And then a third of them really were in such a situation that if you drove by, you wouldn't even know there were burials there. So that was really helpful, helpful for us moving forward and just knowing what our reality was. Then um, what I do and what the board uh, helps and advises me to do is the site plan review. Uh, we'll get a plan in and, and I'm not really, I'm not gonna try to name cemeteries or locations or developers. I just wanna kind of give that information out. I'm gonna keep it pretty anonymous. Uh, we don't wanna point fingers to who's doing things well and who's not, but um, we'll get random uh, plans in through our computer and then I'll see that there's a cemetery and note it and then I'll bring it to the board for the next upcoming meeting. Sometimes I've been able to email, scan an email and we'll have some email dialogue. But for the most part, because of the every other month meeting, we, we have enough time to do plan review and just locate the site. We are hoping that the site is on a, you know, its own lot, its own dedicated lot. We found a lot of times in the past that uh, developers would put the cemetery in the open space and section it off and then it would go to the county. So now the county owns several dozen cemeteries and the maintenance of that, you know, not being pre-budgeted is a challenge. And then it often just gets lost in the woods. So we do appreciate having a lot and having using the code saying we want setbacks. Um, it's supposed to be 30 feet from a cemetery boundary or 10 feet from a grave. So we do encourage that. Obviously the cemetery was here first and it is being preserved, which is great. Um, but some people don't want to live next to the cemetery, so that's a big deal. And I'll give you the example of the disinterment we experienced this last year. 
So we try to do site visits, whether it's the board volunteering to go out there or if I have time to run out and just document. It helps us for the future and it also establishes the reality of what's going on on site. Here's another one where um, there's a development in the, and it's right here in the red and then they have a, they've cleaned it up and they established a fence and we always like the to see a fence because that just helps set the boundary it keeps from like a, it becoming a dog park with people you know just running through it um, and a lot of times it just helps the awareness so that vandalism hopefully is minimal and here's a, here's a latest one we're looking at we have an existing church and they're doing uh, an addition so you know they've been maintaining their cemetery back here in this area but now they're expanding and putting addition here and then the whole parking lot's moving around here. So actually just this Tuesday, we're, the board is gonna be reviewing this project and giving feedback for the developer on what's appropriate and if um, this is enough adequate space for a buffer. We have um, reviewed just, because it's a public meeting, people have brought concerns to us. So little nuisances and concerns have been brought up, lack of signage, uh, dumping. Um, in this case, there was concern that a neighbor was infringing on the property boundary. They were parking, and we discussed and reviewed what the options were and if it was. And for the most part, um, this, this did not turn it into being a problem, like a property violation, but it created a, a great dialogue with the cemetery owners in their care and maintenance. And since the time that we've met publicly at, at our Cemetery Preservation Advisory Board meeting, uh, we've had a, a wonderful relationship with this cemetery in them going for grants and cleaning up and just getting more involved. So uh, something that started out off as a complaint ended up being a wonderful opportunity for the cemetery to be aware of the expectations and working with the state and working with their neighbors. And I, I'm just really proud of the progress that this cemetery has made just through meeting with us. So we have uh, a grant opportunity, it's not necessarily uh, assume that it's going to be every year. I really hope it is in the budget. But last year we were able to give $5,000 away in grants to our Howard County cemeteries. And then this year, coming up, we have we also have $5,000. Um, we asked that it's a matching grant. So it's a little scary because uh, we sent out about 90 letters last year as an outreach. And we also included your grant, the Trader Foundation grant, put the application in there. So I was doing outreach for you guys. But what a wonderful opportunity to share with uh, cemetery owners that, that they could get some funding and they could get it in two different locations. So that was a wonderful timing. Um, we had gotten... I don't know if I have the figure. I think more than $20,000 were asked of last year for grants, and we only had the 5000 And now we've gotten a response of seven people interested, and their amount of work, their estimated amount of work, totals over $80,000, and their total requests, if you add up everything, everyone was asking for $5,000, like the whole lump sum. We were only, we only going to give one away, but we were trying to divide out the... Uh, the great the grant opportunity and so we had gotten you know that's close to thirty thousand dollars in grant requests when we only had five thousand but a subcommittee from the cemetery preservation advisory board and the genealogical society met and um, allocated the funding and so now we're in the second year of our grant funds a lot of it is about um, outreach so we encourage signs signage wayfinding signs we have just a lot of uh, repairs done these guys installed a fence um, just to protect and define their cemetery. We encourage a landscape and clean up and then also repairs. A lot of the fences are historic, so the wrought iron fence, the stone fence, um, the repairs of the, the graves are, are what's on our list for grants. And this is just a sample, again, hard to read, but it's just a quick, really one and a half pager, one pager grant. It doesn't take a lot of time and energy. We ask for some photos to show um, we, we had a lot of people wanting to take down trees with the ash, emerald ash borer killing trees and them being susceptible to falling and then also just the bad storms we've had this year. It seems like the theme was predominantly based on tree removal of dead trees. But it was fairly simple and it's been fairly successful. This is some of last year's projects with mulching, the accessibility on a steep slope. And obviously, this is a team effort. Uh, we, we know that individuals have to work with the Eagle Scouts, Boy Scouts, churches, neighbors. Uh, it, it really is. Even the developers, many of the developers had said they would offer to clean up and plant on the next couple projects coming up on cemetery sites or adjacent to cemetery sites. So that's been pretty successful. We would like to do more. 
So far as our outreach, we have a, a web page. Um, I'd like to have my own web page for um, cemeteries only, but we are under Department of Planning and Zoning. Uh, well, it's Howard County Government, Department of Planning and Zoning, then Conservation Preservation, then Historic Preservation, and then at the bottom you find cemeteries. And we have a lot of the links of our partners. Again, hard to read, but invite you to go there. A coalition is on that site as well. So we try to network and encourage other people to reach out to one another. And this has just our, our, our dates when we meet, the grants that we have, my contact information. So just a lot of the basic information. And then overall, we have, this is really hard to see because it's really like a four foot map when you plant it. This was the first thing that I inherited when I came to the county, uh, the cemetery map. So it's stagnant, it's not interactive, but it does have these little dots. So this is just a zoomed in version. It has these little green dots with the site ID number and all the locations. And you can find that through the data Howard County and then you go to the cemetery inventory map. Th this is actually a great resource for all citizens. I always encourage people to go and just see you know, what maps are, are formed. Um, so that was what we inherited, but in time we've been able to develop um, this layer where we have our same data interactive map that any citizen can use for zoning or um, land use, uh, if there's permits out on different sites. So anyone can get hands on and looking up addresses here and finding out what's going on in their neighborhood or, or with a particular site. So when you go to add layer, you can add the cemetery site and then you get the more interactive um, locations. So it's the same as the green dots that we have, but you can click on each little site and then you get more information. And that is really helpful. And we hope to eventually click on that and you get photos or information that the owner feels is acceptable. Um, we don't want to give too much information. There's always concerns that sometimes when you invite, you tell more people there's a potential for vandalism. But you know, I, th I think awareness and, uh, and outreach is important. So we want to share as much as we can about the reality of how many cemeteries are actually out there and exist so that when there is like huge development, we can be prepared. That's kind of what we do on a regular basis. And then we have some unique sites that we've worked with the past couple years. This is one site, and some of you might be familiar with it, that, that has a historic cemetery. And we thought at the time, six years ago, that um, this was like one whole property. This yellow is just to show the circular drive that goes out so that you can kind of see um, in relationship to what's going on. This is a, I mean, it, this is a messy site right now. It's not, uh, that's not a good neighbor to have that many cars and dumping next to a cemetery. So uh, some cleanup will be well welcomed. However, um, we've, the county's been working and also the county council has been working with um, these neighbors along with these neighbors just to make sure things are legitimate and moving forward. And I will say this year, I haven't been as involved with my time constraints, but this has been a several year project where this owner has purchased this parcel that again, I think many of us thought was part of the original cemetery. So you can kind of see this area down here. And so it is wooded, but we've been, we've been trying to work on, well, what's, what's going on back there? We want to make sure that there's not, um, there's not graves that they're creating their entrance to. This is back to the interactive map. It just shows like land use and zoning, just different opportunities that I use when a site comes up and I'm trying to figure out what's allowed because, um, I mean, obviously the preservation is necessary and that is my goal, but sometimes people have uses and allowances that are pushing that, uh, that envelope or that concern. This is just a picture of ground, uh, that Howard County um, College the community college doing ground penetrating radar in this area and unfortunately they weren't able to get back to the wooded area because it was wooded but they were they were helpful in just showing how close some of those graves were coming back to that property so again some just some development challenges that we face all the time um, something that's also ongoing that lasted a couple years, a developer purchased a property and just was walking the site and happened to find one little tombstone, one little grave. And they contacted um, one of our board members, Fred Dorsey, who seems to be the contact for Howard County, which I appreciate. I always call him my, like, my, my staffer, even though he doesn't get paid, because he really is out in the community doing so much more than I'm able to have time to do. 
And this developer contacted him and they went out to the site and Ken Short, through his research, found that it was in fact a family cemetery and that there was at least a few named people in that, in, on this site. And from just that one little stone found and the efforts of moving forward and working with the board, um, everyone took this matter very seriously and what needed to be done and that the site needed to be verified. So they did ground penetrating radar and then they hired uh, Dr. Hill who did a, a full dig. I mean, he really looked thoroughly. So one little wooded site turned into a pretty extensive project over the past couple years. And they did find all these flags are the sites of where they thought remains were and then they were covering up them. I just wanted to share that. I don't know if many of you have experienced the disinterment process. So I found it fascinating in the extent of how they were evaluating the soil and the depth in which they were digging. So that was a long process and it's we had many conversations with the state's attorney because they had signed off to you know allow disinterment. This was, I'll go back to this site, let me see. The challenge here is that um, the 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 cemetery was found in this area right here, which was on a house lot. And we were trying to convince them that if they could just rearrange their open space um, and lose one lot, 41 lots out of 42, that they could have a park and they could have more accessibility and save some trees and then just keep the cemetery where it was in the development. And unfortunately, they, um, they did not agree and so they they disinterred so that they could keep this plan and then this became their open space in the back. So this is what came up with the plot and I tried to line it up to exactly what was out on site. It was pretty incredible to see the details and they were disinterred to uh, a family cemetery and many of the family members were actually very grateful that this Family Cemetery wasn't going to be among a community or potentially vandalized in the future and that it was going to be treated with the respect that it deserved. So um, that is a good thing that is now in preservation forever and at the site with the rest of the family. But that was a heated debate that went to the planning board and the cemetery discussion got brought up beyond development at that level as well. Um, so I wanted to show you just some of that process. And honestly, that's probably, yeah, that is it. So as we move forward, we're trying to strengthen our laws and see what can be more teeth into some of the challenges that we face. But in general, I think we've made a lot of um, stride in the past couple years. And it's been really through networking and working with uh, other organizations such as the coalition and the genealogical society and even just the, the wonderful, the, the Boy Scouts, Eagle Scouts willing to do projects that have helped um, preserve and protect and have cleaned up many of our sites. But as we move forward, we hope to get more grant funding and just more awareness for what we face. And I'm open to hearing any suggestions that you have. Thank you for your time.